I didn't become interested in the thyroid until I was diagnosed myself. And that's when I became a Hashimoto's expert slash guinea pig <laughs> because um, there really wasn't a lot of information out there about what you can do other than to take Synthroid, right. which was the number one prescribed medication in all of, the all of the United States in 2013 and 2014. So, but... That's crazy. When you are diagnosed with a thyroid condition, you're what told... What happened to you? Like, how did you feel when you were diagnosed? Um, so we'll go into that in just a sec, but what, what happens is that people are just told that they can, they can only take Synthroid and that that's all there is to it, yet people continue to struggle with a lot of different symptoms and they don't get better and they're not addressing the root cause. So I really wanted to figure out what I can do to help myself and yeah. then help others with the conditions. Let's get into symptoms. You want to talk, talk thyroid symptoms and what people at home could be looking out for? Absolutely. I mean, this okay. is this is um, this is what the show's about. We want we want people to leave with actions that they can look at in their own lives and take on, try on for a week, and if it fits, they can wear it for the rest of their life. Absolutely. So let's talk about let's we're going to go from kind of head to toe with thyroid symptoms. Yes. So obviously, you do want to get testing with your doctor, TSH, thyroid antibodies, TPO, and TG antibodies. But you know, if you're sitting at home and if you're wondering if you have this thing, let's let's kind of go over. Okay, so we want to look at the hair and we want to look at texture and whether it's falling out. So a person <laughs> with that's the gel. Now we just messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> so a person with an underactive thyroid is going to have a higher likelihood of losing hair. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be shedding more hair if they're in the shower. They're going to see hair on the wall, hair in the drain. Some some of my clients have described it as having a rat at the bottom of the tub. And is this even shower. guys, I mean, is this like different than male pattern baldness? Because can men, you know, because mine's probably a combination of male pattern baldness and, um, you know, taking a strand of hair here and pulling it down, you know, wearing hats all the time. So that's a really <laughs> good question because um, with different patterns of hair loss, you may have patches, you know, um, alopecia areata is when you have a big empty patch of hair. With thyroid hair loss, it's diffuse. So that means it's all over your hair. It's all over your head. So it's not yes. like you're just losing, you're not just getting a bigger forehead and you're not getting a weird patch somewhere. It's everywhere. Okay. And then hair that's more brittle and more difficult to brush, that mm -hmm. can also be a thyroid symptom. So um, one of the early signs of having, um, if you have straight hair, this is especially important. If you're a woman and you're having trouble brushing your hair, it's becoming more tangled. Mm. That can be a sign that your thyroid function is off. And it could be, you know, anything, whether it's underactive or overactive, your hair is going to be affected. Interesting. So that's a really important thing to look at. The okay. other thing is looking at your eyebrows. So your eyebrows um, look nice and filled in. Can we, get a, can we get a close up of the eyebrows? No. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> all right, all right. So what are they? Tell me. So people with thyroid conditions, what can happen is they can begin to start losing their eyebrows. And the Ooh. upper third part of the eyebrow, so like right here, if you start losing this part, uh -huh. that is a really good sign that you may have thyroid disease. That's kind of one of those specific signs of um, thyroid. Huh. All right. Do, do I'm, am I losing it? It's hard to tell in this light. Do you have makeup on? No, no, no. Not really. Um, but... What do you think? You know, one thing I would recommend is looking at old pictures of yourself and seeing whether or not you have less eyebrows now. Because it's, it's one of those things less that if, if you've plucked your eyebrows or, you know, some people are born with a lot of eyebrows, others are not. Yes. So that's Unibrow. something to consider. Yeah, some Unibrow. people have a lot more eyebrows than, yeah. than you and I do yes. as a starting point. So it, it's, it's really you're looking at, you know, what was your baseline and how has that changed? Awesome. The other thing that we are going to look at is your eyes. Uh -huh. A person with um, hypothyroid or an underactive thyroid is going to have puffy, swollen eyes. Yes. A person with an overactive thyroid, um, a lot of times they may have protrusion of the eyes oh, yes, or eyelid the retraction. So their eyes may be... Exophthalmus. Exophthalmus, exactly. So their eyes are going to be bulging out of their head. And of course, this is all... Um, it's all going to be relative. So you want to look at your baseline. Some, some people have naturally sunken in eyes, others have naturally bulgy eyes. So you want to look at, has your face changed? So my hair, <laughs> my eyebrows, I eyes. mean, my eyes, they're probably puffy. I mean, we've got three kids. Honey, are you watching? I mean, I, I stay up too late, probably. Um, so I, I have everything. I've got the brittle hair, mm -hmm. 
but that could be that could be you know could just be baldness. your type of hair so it, yeah. it, you know we, let's go over some of the other symptoms yeah, tell me so going back to your face if you have dry skin mm -hmm. if you have um, a pale skin color um, for men <laughs> pasty like pasty <laughs> yep pasty. <laughs> Peaches and cream complexion. So. Oh my God! Have you watched? <laughs> For those of you at home, yes, I, the hair, the pastiness, the play-doh complexion. I, I, I'm fitting everything so far. Okay. So yeah, so far we're 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 getting a high score on this assessment. Um, Go ahead. So, so we're looking at um, your face, whether or not you have dry skin. Um, for men, Got sometimes that. they may have trouble growing beards. Women have trouble mm. in the opposite direction where they grow hair on their face when they're not supposed to. Got it. With yeah. thyroid issues in some cases. Um, looking at your, you know, we're kind of on the head, so let's talk about brain function. Mm -hmm. People with thyroid issues, they may feel anxious. That can be a sign of an overactive thyroid. Mm -hmm. And sometimes at the beginning stages of an underactive thyroid, you'll see that happening. Yeah. They may be depressed. They may have trouble with motivation. Mm. And they just may not feel very motivated. And they may have yeah. brain fog. Yes, well, we talk about that all the time with chemo. Yes. Chemo brain, well there's thyroid brain, right. hypothyroid brain. Absolutely. Where you, you're, you're just having problems like finding a word or remembering somebody's name, some simple thing like that, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly, and then anxiety is a very common thing where mm -hmm. somebody will have new onset anxiety. So um, I like to tell a story when I used to be, when I was, before I was diagnosed, I was really anxious and my husband would go out running and he'd say, I'll be back in 20 minutes and 25 minutes would pass. And I'd be like, OK, where is he? What happened? Did he get hit by a car? Did you know, did he fall off the side of the cliff or, you know, did he run off with another woman in the last yeah. 20 minutes? And it <laughs> just wasn't rational. Please. <laughs> no, but but what I but I bet a lot of women are just, you know, um, diagnosed with anxiety, anxiety in there. Take a Xanax, take a Xanax or take a vitamin Prozac. X. Here you go. Put the right the prescription. Sometime, right? Sometimes even things like Seroquel, they're given, you know, heavy duty antipsychotic medications. Mm -mm. And so that's a really important symptom. Anytime somebody has new onset mental health issues, I highly recommend getting your thyroid function tested because um, early stages of Hashimoto's can resemble panic attacks. They can resemble anxiety disorders. They can um, resemble obsessive compulsive disorder, um, bipolar disorder. And I've even seen some people who were hospitalized for psychotic disorders. And it's basically, when you think about the thyroid, it can stimulate you. It can make you really anxious and irritable. Like when you have too much of it, manic. So that's a, something that I really, really recommend for people to do whenever they're struggling, have family members or friends, sometimes it could be a thyroid problem, not a mental health problem. So let's talk about yes. um, actually the neck. So the, the thyroid gland is located at the base of the neck and some people, right yeah, it's gonna be under your Adam's apple. So in some yeah. people, they may have an enlarged thyroid gland. So yep. this is rare. Um, goiter. Goiter. So we don't see this as often. A goiter was, um, back in the day, the primary cause of thyroid disorders was iodine deficiency. Mm -hmm. Now that we have iodine added to our salt supplies in most westernized countries, yeah. the primary cause is actually Hashimoto's. And you don't necessarily always have an enlarged thyroid gland with Hashimoto's. There's two types. In one type, the thyroid shrinks. In another type, the thyroid enlargens. If you have an underactive thyroid, you know, I often give an example of two women, two best friends. They're both going to the gym together and they're eating all the same foods. Yet one of them, if she has a thyroid condition, is going to keep putting on weight and she's going to have a difficult time losing weight. And they're both working out the same, and they're eating. They're doing exactly the same thing because the thyroid That's gland brilliant. controls our metabolism. So mm -hmm. it generates, um, it, it helps us burn calories for energy. Yep. And so when you have low thyroid function, you're not going to be burning calories as quickly. So mm -hmm. um, generally we need a certain amount of calories per day to keep us alive and to sustain our body's metabolism. Yeah. When you have thyroid conditions, that gets suppressed. So you can be eating you know, carrots and salad every day and exercising and three still. hours a day and you can be putting on weight because huh. your basal metabolic rate is gonna be very, very low compared to the average person. The flip side of that is in hyperthyroidism, people can lose scary amounts of weight within a very short amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, they can, you know, I've seen people who have lost five to 10 pounds within a short course of a few weeks, and they often feel agitated and they have palpitations and they just don't feel so good. 
the other thing that we're thinking about is whether you're dressed appropriately for the weather. And we're in sunny San Diego here. Yeah. Um, and so I'm wearing this little dress uh -oh. and you're wearing a sweater. Yeah. So this is my busy sweater. Yes. Um, it's part of my it's part of my new look for the show. I like it. It's nice. But but you're right. I do tend to get cold. Mm -hmm. um, is that? Yeah, maybe that, that has something to do with my thyroid. That is actually a really big, one of those giveaway thyroid symptoms, is that you tend to be colder than everybody else in the room. So if you're a woman that's working in an office and all the ladies are in short sleeves and you're wearing a sweater and a scarf and you're shivering uh, you know, at the lunch table, that's an, that's an indication that potentially your thyroid is not working well enough hmm. and because you know, you're not burning that ener that energy for, for generating heat, because that's what the thyroid does. As it burns calories, it generates heat. Yep. So, Interesting. No, so I yeah. mean, it's fascinating. The thyroid does so much. It affects every cell in the body. So what, what are the other things that people should just be aware of? Cold hands, cold extremities, palpitations, uh, swollen tongue, any kind of swelling in the body, um, any kind of mental health disorders like I mentioned. Uh -huh. You know, a, a swollen tongue is an indication if you have um, bite marks on the side of your tongue that could be a potential symptom of having an underactive thyroid. Um, generally fatigue, mm -hmm. weight issues, hair loss, mm. and then um, sleep is, brain what about fog. Sleep? So it can. Are be, you sleeping long? You like you said, you were sleeping these long hours. You can be you sleeping hypersomnia. So oversleeping can be a symptom, as can insomnia. My so wife was just was just telling me that I sleep too much, and I and that could be part of it as well. Yeah, that sounds. Um, potentially I've got like five or six things on this list. Yeah, you have quite a few on that list. Huh. So I would recommend that you um, see your doctor or see your lab, however you do <laughs> it, and make sure you get tested Will for you TSH. Order those tests for me. Oh, you can order them yourself. All right, I'll order them. <laughs> I can do it. I can. There do you it. go. Yeah, I noticed that a lot of the primary docs in the community are are really getting more and more focused on the thyroid. That that I'm they're so just grateful they're, for that. yeah, they're just ordering it almost on everybody. Where when I first started, it wasn't as prevalent. So I think they, I think you're getting the word out. I think people are standing up for their you know being their own advocates. Power to the patient. Yes, absolutely. Right? And that you talk about that, right? Be your own advocate. And there, there's a lot of that in the book about you have to sort of take a stand for your own health. You do. You really have to be your own health advocate. Um, doctors are out there to help us. Um, every single doctor I've ever met has wanted to help every patient that they know. But there are th certain things you can't be that, you know, primary care doctors, what's the average time they get to spend with a patient? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. And they have to cover so many bases. And then they have all these restrictions from insurance companies where they're discouraged from doing certain diagnostic tests and so on and so forth. So, you know, as patients, we really have to work hard on finding a doctor that we're very comfortable with, that's willing to listen to us and that's willing to um, to take us seriously. Um, one of the, the things with thyroid issues is that every um, for every man with a thyroid condition, there will be seven women. Mm. It, this is a condition that seems to be um, somewhat connected to hormone fluctuations. They mm -hmm. can bring on the condition. So um, puberty, pregnancy, and perimenopause are three times when we see peak times when women become, start having more thyroid symptoms. And unfortunately, the truth is that um, sometimes women are just not taken as seriously as men. And you said, you know, doctors don't go to doctors and men don't usually go to doctors but women will often reach out to their doctors and and a lot of times unfortunately they're considered hypochondriacs when yeah, right. they're the ones that know their bodies best so yeah. if you're somebody that you're sitting at home and you're feeling like you have some of these symptoms that we talked about or just something's not right you need to find a doctor that will listen to you and that will um, th that will really care for you so don't let somebody else stand in the way of of getting your health back